Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome back to the session. Hope all of you are back after the lunch break. So, guys, before the lunch break, we covered two labs. First lab was using a resource of the speed service, whereas second lab was using a resource of the vision service. Right. Now, let's go ahead. Uh, I can hear a sound. I don't know whether it's from the laptop or outside my house. OK, I guess it's from outside my house. Okay, anyways, let's go ahead. So as I mentioned, guys, before the lunch break, we covered two labs. First lab was using a resource of the speed service. Second lab was using a resource of the vision service. Now we'll continue with the resource of the vision service and try to see more labs. All right. So our third lab will be to build our own AI model. OK, we'll be building our own AI model. But without using any code. So Azure does offer you that capability as well. OK, so you will use, you will create your own AI vision model. Without any code whatsoever, you will not be required to line, uh, write even a single line of code. So this is this will be our third lab. We'll be creating our own AI vision model uh, without any code. What will be the purpose of it? Its purpose will be for image classification. So for example, let's say I have images of two animals, dogs and cats. And uh, if at all I show any image to my model, my model should rightly tell me whether this image of is of a dog or whether this image is of a cat. Or for example, let's say I have images of fruits. So let's say I have images of fruit uh, of three fruits, banana, apples and oranges. So I will make my own AI model in such a way that in future, if I show uh, a fruit image to my AI model, it will be able to tell me whether that uh, image it, uh, has a banana in it or it has an apple in it or it has an orange in it. OK, so our third lab will be to build our own AI ER vision model, but without writing any piece of code. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, let's see how to do it over here. Up till now, if there are any doubts in your minds whatsoever, uh, you can paste your doubts in the chat. And I'll be happy to answer those for you. All right, so moving forward. Let's go ahead. And uh, what I'll be doing is I'll be showing you a data set that I have with me. Let me show you that particular data set. These are the two folders that I wanted. And I will paste those two folders over here. And let me organize this a bit. And after that, we'll continue our journey with the third lab. I'll just rename this folder to lab three. OK, create another folder called lab two. And uh, whatever I did in lab two, right? All of the content of lab two, I will just send it to this folder. OK, just for better. Arrangement, I think this. Fine. So let's move forward. So guys, these are the images that I have with me. Let me walk you through those images. In total, I have 15 images. Uh, sorry, uh, my mistake. In total, I have 45 images, out of which 15 images belong to banana. 15 images belong to apple. And the remaining 15 belong to orange. 
Okay. So in total, I have 45 images. And uh, you can see that they will be of different, different fruits. Okay. In particular, I have, I have images of three fruits only apple, banana, and orange. So as I mentioned, total 45 images, out of which 15 images have an apple in it. The other 15 have a banana in it and the remaining 15 have a orange. OK, fine. So I want to create my own custom AI vision model that will help me to do image classification. So in future, if I tell my own AI model to tell me based on the image, whether the image has an apple or orange or a banana, it should be able to tell me that. Okay. Let's go ahead and let's see how to do it. So what I will do is I'll go to this link called portal.vision.cognitive.azure.com. Okay, I'll go to this link called portal.vision.cognitive.azure.com. I'll just search for that link. Yes, here it is. Portal.vision.cognitive.azure.com. This is the one that I want. Now, what do I want to do? I want to make my own custom AI model. But what was the purpose? As I mentioned, my purpose is to uh, make my AI model for image classification, right? So over here, I'll go ahead and I'll select this option that I want to make my own custom AI model for image classification. So let me start a project based on that. And we had created a resource in the morning, right? It was called test multi resource. I'll go ahead and I will select that resource. Now what I will do is I'll add a new data set over here. So what will be my data set? Those 45 images, right? Uh, based on those 45 images, I will train my own custom AI vision model. Fine. So let me go ahead. Let me give a name. Uh, to my data set, I'll call it training images. I want to make my own custom AI vision model for image classification. Uh, have I uploaded my data onto a resource called a storage container in Azure? No, I have not. So I'll have to do one thing. I'll have to go back to my Azure portal and I'll try to create a resource called storage account resource and my images i will try to upload over there let me go ahead let me upload my images over there i'll but before that i'll try to create this resource called storage account resource okay now let me give it a different name it seems that this name for the storage account resource has already been taken It seems that this name is good enough, so fine. Uh, then it is asking me to check the performance level. Uh, select the performance level, I should say. Here I have two options, standard and premium. So remember, guys, here we are creating a resource for storage account, which is similar to Google Drive. Just like in Google Drive, I can upload any type of files. Similarly, we have an alternative of Google Drive in Azure called storage account. In storage account also, I can upload any type of files. Okay. And here it is asking me to select the performance of the storage account. Uh, with standard uh, tier, uh, you will get slightly higher latency as compared to premium tier. Okay, with premium tier, uh, if you choose premium tier, then uh, performing read and write, write operations on the storage account will be even faster. But uh, obviously, that will be slightly on the expensive side. It will not be that much expensive. But as compared to standard tier, obviously premium is slightly expensive so i'll stick to standard only okay then it is asking me to select the redundancy level geo redundant storage means that let's say i am uh, uh, publishing my resource in east us then a copy of it will be stored somewhere else let's say a copy of it will be stored somewhere in india so that let's say if any of these uh, if all of the azure servers in east us get damaged because of whatever reason let's say due to a natural calamity all of the servers of Azure and East US get damaged. At least you have the backup of the resources that were uploaded over there, right? So you had a backup somewhere in India. So at least whatever uh, the user uh, is 
whatever uh, user is uh, whatever work the user is performing that work won't get lost okay so just for backup purposes however your geo redundant storage is uh, expensive what i want is uh, i want locally redundant storage the least expensive option with that what will happen is uh, if you are uploading if you are uploading a resource in east us a copy of it will be created in east us only it will not be created in another geographical region okay it will be created locally obviously there are uh, disadvantages of this but it's the least expensive option so we'll stick to that and uh, uh, all the other settings like networking settings data protection settings encryption settings i'll keep default and i'll directly jump to review plus create let me directly jump to review plus create over here azure will run the, will do a final validation to check whether it can give me what i'm asking for or not and the validation is successful so azure at last gives me option to create the storage account resource so let me click on the create button and with that the storage account resource will be created over here so my storage account resource will be created and it will take around 2 minutes or so for it to get created so we'll have to wait till then uh, deepak says share today's live session recording after completing the session on whatsapp so deepak uh, all of our uh, recordings of the webinars are uploaded on our youtube channel so synergetics youtube channel okay. uh, you can get the recordings from there although if you're asking it asking uh, send it on whatsapp i'll ask with my team if they can send you the link of the same on whatsapp as well but if at all they forget uh, to send you the link it's always available the recording is always available on the synergetics youtube channel okay now let's go ahead uh, let me go to the storage account resource that i created and uh, what i will do is i will try to upload the 45 images that i had with me right so let me go to the container section container is nothing but a folder you can say okay in simple words you can understand it as a folder that will contain the files so let me create a folder or in other words let me create a container let me give it a name called fruits so i have created a folder called fruits i'll wait for it to get created fully and the folder has been created i'll go into that folder and inside that folder i will upload all the image files that i have so let me upload the same so i'll go to the place where i have stored my images and from there uh, i will upload all of my images to storage account resource let me go there so in total at 45 images right and guys at the end you will also see another file apart from images it's called coco file okay c o c o coco file what is that coco file basically that file has information about which image has uh, belongs to which category so for example does the first image belong to apple category or banana category does the second image belong to apple category or banana category or any other category basically so it has that information that which image belongs to which category uh, here i have a coco file with me but if suppose you do not have a coco file then what to do that also i will show you so don't worry okay so for now in fact let me just uh, uh, only upload the images the coco file i won't upload okay i i will generate it myself just to show you how you can generate it yourself as well fine so i just have my 45 images that's all and you can say i have selected my 45 files okay and it is checking if there is any conflict in naming or not it will do a validation validation is completed now it asks us that if we want to upload those 45 files in a storage account resource we can so let me upload it and now those 45 files have been uploaded fine perfect now what we'll do is uh going uh, to this new portal called portal.vision.cognitive.azure.com okay here uh, if you remember previously we had uh, clicked on the setting that i want to create my own custom ai model for image classification right we clicked on that setting now 
let's start off. So the first thing that it needs for creating your own custom AI model is data, right? Without data, it cannot work. So let's create a new data set. Let's call it training underscore images. Uh, I want to upload this data so that I, later I can make my model for image classification. And the data will be obtained from that storage account resource. Storage account is also known as blob storage account. Okay. So blob storage account, storage account, one and the same thing. All right. And inside my storage account resource, I had created a container or I had created a folder called fruits. And inside that folder, I have all my files. Fine. So from that place, it will get all the data so that later we can go ahead and uh, make our own custom AI vision model for image classification. Fine. So first it needs a Coco file. So I've uploaded the 45 images. Now it needs a Coco file. OK, Coco file means a file that contains information about which image belongs to which category. So does the first image belong to Apple category, banana category or orange category? Does the second image belong to Apple category, banana category or orange category like that? Okay. So that is known as a Coco file. So let's create a Coco file from scratch. So I'll click on this create button over here. Enter a project name. I will say. Coco. File making. And I'll have to create a new workspace because I don't have. Uh, Azure ML workspace with me. So Azure ML is another resource. So up till now you have only worked with two resource, right? First was that. Uh, uh, vision uh, AI resource that we created before the lunch break. Second was this storage account resource. And now you will create a third resource over here called Azure ML resource. Uh, that is only required for creating the Coco file. If you already have a Coco file with you, then you do not need to create this resource whatsoever. Anyways, let's go ahead. Let's create that Coco file. So up till now, what I have done first, I selected a setting that I want to create my own custom uh, AI vision model for image classification. Second, I uploaded all my 45 images of different different fruits. Third, I want to mention that which image belongs to which category. So for that, I want to create a Coco file. OK, that file that contains information about which image belongs to which category is known as a Coco file. So let me create it. Uh, in order to create it, I just have to fill in this form. So I'll go ahead and fill in this form over here. Fine, rest of the settings I'll keep the same. Region I'll keep the same. Uh, the Azure ML resource is automatically connected to a storage account. Here it's creating a new storage account and connecting over there. But anyways, that new storage account will be of no use for me. I won't be doing anything over there. But as a rule, it's required. So fine, let, let it create uh, uh, another storage account. I mean, for us, it will be of no use. Second, key vault. So Azure ML resource, make sure that all of your keys and the other required credentials are stored securely a, uh, using key vault. OK, so. Uh, I mean, you can select any existing key vault that you have in Azure or by default, you can see Azure creates a new one for you as well. OK, so you can stick to that new one. Next, uh, there is another resource called application insights that Azure ML creates on its own. This resource is used to monitor the health of your uh, models basically that you create. OK, so by default, it creates a new application insights resource. You can stick to it or choose any existing one that you already have. Then container registry is to select any Docker images that you want to plug in here. I don't want to do that. Fine, And I will directly go ahead and move to review plus create. So let me go ahead and move to review plus create button. And while this is doing the validation, let me answer some of the doubts that you guys have posted in the chat. Abhijit is saying, are we storing images in blob? Yes, Abhijit. So first we stored images in blob. Or it's also so blob storage account or storage account one in the same thing. OK, so we are storing our images over there. From that place, I got uh, from that place, I'm getting the images inside my uh, resource that I create. OK, which resource I created? If you remember, I created that AI uh, vision resource before the lunch break. 
same resource I'm using over here. So first I uploaded my images over there into my blob storage account or into my storage account, which is one and the same thing. Once I did that, then those images I'm getting it over here into my resource. OK, this uh, vision resource requires that, OK, if you are trying to import any uh, images or if you're trying to import any files, first those files should be uh, uh, uploaded onto storage account. Only from there you can get it inside your vision resource. OK, so we did that. So our images have been obtained inside our vision resource. Now, how do we know which images belong to which category? For that, we need to create a Coco file. And here we are creating a Coco file. OK, so let's go ahead and let's see how to do this thing. So Swamitra says, how much cost did you incur for the labs? Uh, Swamitra, I don't think uh, more than 50 rupees. I don't think so. I'll have to check. OK, we'll do that check. Uh, so at the end, what we'll do is we'll go to a resource group and we will see that all the resources that we created today cumulatively, what was the cost? OK, so we'll have to see. Uh, it's very simple. It will hardly take a few seconds. Uh, but if, if you want me to assume, I would say not more than 50 rupees, but still we'll do that validation at the end. OK, so that you know the exact figure. Uh, did you? Uh, no, Swamitra, we directly jump to review plus create because all the identity settings, networking settings, we wanted to keep it default. OK. And uh, so we directly jump to review plus create. You didn't miss it. OK, so what did we do up till now? First, we uploaded all of our uh, 45 images onto storage account. Then those images, we got it to our uh, vision resource that we created. Right, because that vision resource will do the actual uh, work and what work we want to do. We wanted to create our own custom AI model for, for image classification. So fine that uh, vision resource got the images, but how will it know which image belongs to which category? For that, it needs a Coco file. So here we are creating a Coco file. Fine, so let us create a Coco file. We'll go ahead and we'll try to create a Coco file over here. So if I ask you guys, what is a Coco file? What will you say? Can anybody answer? What is this file called Coco file COCO? What does it do? What information does it have? Anybody? Ah, Swamitra has given the correct information. It actually mentions information about labels that which image has which label or which image belongs to which category. Perfect. So Swamitra has given the perfect answer. OK, fine. So let me click on this button saying that I want to go to coco file making let's complete that making process and then we'll see what to do next okay fine and now you can see there is a button called add label categories that means add uh, uh, as some other mentioned coco file is used for labeling right so let's add the labels or let's add the categories, I should say. Fine, let's do that. And I'll click on this button called add label category. There are three labels only, right? Either the label of an image will be apple. Either the label of an image will be banana. Or the label of an image will be orange. And I will say that if at all, if any images have labels, don't keep them start over by removing all existing labels and i will relabel the points myself i will relabel the images myself fine let's click on save fine now let's go ahead let's now start the labeling process so i'll click on start button over here and it will try to start the labeling process let's view the project that it has started OK, it is still starting, so we'll just wait. You can see it is starting. We'll wait uh, it to you know do the required validation and everything. After that, it will allow us to start the labeling process. OK, so we'll label that which uh, image belongs to which category. Uh, so let's say we see an Apple image, we'll assign it a label of Apple, or we'll assign it a category of Apple, I should say. Similarly, if we see a banana image, we'll assign it a label of banana or we'll assign it a category of banana. Label, category, and the same. 
Okay, so we'll just wait for the labeling process to finish all the backend uh, work and for it to allow the labeling that we want to do. So let's wait. It is taking slightly higher time. It's fine. We'll have to wait till this uh, labeling process is completely set up. And labeling will be easy. Uh, once it's fully set up, I'll show you how to do it. So up till now, just to revise what have we actually done? Let's do a quick revision, right? So first, what did I do? I uploaded my images. To your blob storage account, also known as storage account. Right storage account or blob storage account one and the same thing. After that. From there you copied the images. To the vision resource that we created, right? So before the lunch break, we had already created a resource for our lab Two. same resource we are using for lab three as well. Then. Once the resource knows, OK, these are the images on which the model has to be built. How will the resource know which image belongs to which category or which image has which label? For that, we want to create a Coco file. And that's what we are doing right now. We are into this third step, which is to generate a Coco file. OK, fine. So where are the processes that set up? And now what we'll do is we'll click on this button called label data. Let's click on it. And then we'll be able to manually label the image files. So let's see. So this is an image of banana. So I will assign it a label of banana. Then similarly, this is an image of orange. I'll, I will assign it a label of orange. Again, we have an image of banana and so on. I will do it for all the 45 image files that I have with me. And you can see this process is slightly tedious, right? That's why when you will practice the labs from Microsoft, Microsoft will already give you uh, the Coco file generated. OK, you would want to you don't have to generate the Coco file I already showed you right in my folder that I downloaded from Microsoft. Uh, I already had the Coco file with me. I already had the Coco file with me, right? Uh, but then I decided to show you that in case you want to generate your own Coco file, you don't want to rely on Microsoft because in real world, Microsoft won't give you Coco files for every project, right? In real world, if you want to create your own Coco file, then how you do it? Fine. So let's see over here. I'll just complete the labeling process. We'll see what to do next. Almost 12 images have labeled around 32 more. To go. Okay, 13 images have labeled 32 more to go. Fine. Let's complete the process. And because this uh, process is slightly tedious, as I mentioned, Microsoft has already given the Coco file to you for this particular lab that we are seeing. I've already downloaded, uh, you know, all of this data, including Coco file and everything from Microsoft. So for practicing, Microsoft makes sure if at all it is a tedious process, then some things it will make it available to you. Okay, so you don't have to work more. So let's complete the labeling process over here. Abhi says, can we use a to utility like image generator class? Where we can keep label data. The image generator class, how will it be used to assign labels? Image generator class is not for assigning labels, nobody. Any other, I guess you wanted to communicate something else. Huh, label data is already there, huh? Then it's fine. Same label data is there. If you already have the Coco file, your Coco file needs to be there. Okay, any other way of labeling won't work, buddy. Here on this particular tool. So Coco file has to be there. No other way of labeling would work. 
like you would have normally done it in tensorflow right in tensorflow we don't have to generate this coco file there is another way to store the labels right uh, but here buddy we you have to generate coco file only nothing apart from coco file we want So now let's go ahead. Let's complete this labeling process. Uh, around uh, 18 more images to go. Let's just complete it. And we'll see what to do next. As I mentioned, out of 45 images, 15 images were of apple, 15 images were of banana, and the remaining 15 were of orange. I hope I have not mislabeled anything. If I've mislabeled anything, then it will affect our model's performance later on. Let's see. Almost four images more to go. Okay, I'm just done. Fine. And now what we'll do is I'll go back. And now you can see we have a export button that is enabled, right? If I click on it, it will uh, export the label data. Now I can export it in many ways. Uh, I will select this way called Coco file. So basically with Coco file, what will happen is you will get uh, labeled uh, labeling details in a JSON file. OK, so if you get labeling details in a JSON file, that is known as a Coco file basically. Fine. Uh, let's go ahead and let's try to download the Coco file. I'll click on the button called download Coco file. And fine, my Coco file has been downloaded. And have a look at what information is stored. I'll start from the end. So it says that there are three categories. Uh, category one is apple, category two is banana, category three is orange. So you see the last image has a category of one. That means it belongs to Apple category, right? Category of one is Apple category. Second last image also has category of one, so Apple category. Third last image has a category of three. That means orange category and so on. Like this for all the 45 images, okay? So basically it, it's, it has this information over here as to what are the images, what is the category of images, okay, and so on. Fine, so it has this uh, labeling information. All right, we have this. Now what I will do is uh, I have generated my Coco file, so let me add it. I will say import Coco file from that Azure ML resource that I created. So let's do it. My Coco file name will be test Coco subscription. Let me choose it and everything else is fine. All right, let's import that Coco file. And we'll be almost done. All right, all right. Uh, so we have uploaded our 45 images and we also have information about which image belongs to which category. That means we have the Coco file with us also. Fine, these two things we needed. The uh, Images which will act as features and the labels which will act as target. OK, fine. Now what we'll do is we'll go ahead and we'll move to this section called custom models and we'll try to create our own custom AI vision model. So let's do it and let me enter a name. I'll call it a custom. Root classification. Uh, I'm creating this model for image classification. So let me select that option. Uh, these will be the images for my training data set, right? Those 45 images that I uploaded. For testing, I won't select anything. For care testing, I'll keep it, keep it empty only. I won't select this. For testing, I have a different data set that I'll show to you later on. Fine. Uh, the training budget, uh, I'll keep it to one hour only. See, the more you train your model, the better your performance, the, the better the model's performance will be, right? So for example, today I'm training you for, let's say six to seven hours. So that's fine. But let's say if I train you for 60 hours, you will be even better. Your performance will be even better, right? So just like that, uh, the more 
training you do on your model, the better the performance is usually fine. But uh, here, since I don't want to incur more costs, I'll select the minimum uh, training budget of one hour. OK, fine. Uh, now let's go ahead. Uh, so this is the maximum time uh, your uh, training will take. So I'm saying maximum within one hour, complete the training. Now within one hour, it could it could complete training in five minutes also, 10 minutes also, 59 minutes also. But I'm saying maximum will be one hour. OK. Fine, now let's go ahead. Uh, let's train our model. And this will take around 15 minutes or so to complete the training. OK, so we'll have to wait till then. And uh, after the training is complete, I will test my custom AI model and we'll see how it works. So up till now, guys, today what we have done uh, first was we try to use a resource of speech service, right, in order to perform speech translation. Second thing that we did was we tried to use a resource of vision service and we tried to analyze the images. And in both the labs, we didn't create our own model. It's just that we use the AI models that Azure created. Right now, uh, the third lab uh, was to create our own custom AI model using the vision resource for image classification. Or image classification. OK, and uh, we are still in a third lab. Uh, we are almost done. It's just that we need to wait for a custom AI model to complete its training. OK, so I don't think it will take more than 15 minutes or so. To complete training It's just that we'll have to keep on clicking this refresh button uh, just to check. What is the progress of the training? Currently, you can see the training is still going on. We'll have to keep on clicking the refresh button to see if the status is completed or not. Fine. Uh, so till then, let me check. One other thing, let me check what all testing images I have. OK, so it seems I have three images for testing. One is of apple, second of banana, third is of orange. OK. I think our custom AI model should uh, most probably correctly detect all three of them. Let's see. We'll test it once the training of this model is complete. And by the way, uh, I guess uh, let me tell you which lab this is. We should have a lab called. Huh, this is the lab. Classify images with Azure AI custom vision. So up till now we have done three labs already. So from your official AI 102 curriculum, we are done with three labs already. OK, one more lab to go and we'll see how that works. So let's check. We are still into a third lab. Where we are training our own custom AI model. You can see the training is still in progress. So we'll have to wait. Let's wait for a few minutes. Till then, if you guys have any doubts whatsoever, you can ask. We are still into our third lab over here. I'll just drink some water. And if you have any doubts, you can mention in the chat till our model is trained. OK, Abhijit says, what could happen if we try to test any other similar fruit like sweet lime similar to orange? Huh, so Abhijit, uh, make sure that uh, you put another category called sweet line. Okay, in your Coco file while creating your Coco file and appropriate, uh, appropriately label your images. If you appropriately label your images, I don't think you will have any issue in the model performance. But let's say in training uh, while the images that you uploaded and the Coco file that you have uh, made, let's say there you did a mistake. 
while assigning a label. Let's say it was actually a orange, but you labeled it as sweet line. So obviously while testing the model, then it would have issues. OK. So here what it will do, buddy, is uh, your I just have three categories, right? Orange, uh, banana and apple. So if, if it sees a fruit similar to orange, it could be sweet lime or uh, any other thing. If it sees something similar to orange, it will call it orange. OK, but you want that. OK, uh, it should not get confused between orange and sweet lime because they seem similar. So do one thing, introduce a, fo introduce a fourth category called sweet lime. OK, and train your custom uh, AI model. You can do that in your free time. OK, that's why these labs are here. So Amitra says, can you use different accuracy scoring than provided by Azure? Can we train any open source model? Can we, or can we train any open source model also using this service? Huh, OK, uh, so using this vision service, we cannot, Swamitra. But we have another service called Azure ML service. OK, there you can train even uh, there. There is even more customization provided to you. OK, but the thing over there is you will only be able to train your uh, machine learning models over there. OK, so there is another service called Azure ML service. There are more customi customization is there. Here you can see, uh, here you cannot uh, include your own open source model over here in this third lab. The third lab we are performing using uh, vision service. So in this service, you don't have that option. OK, you can either use, there are only two options in vision service. Either use the models that Azure has created, or if you want to create your own model, that too, there are limitations. OK. You can only do a few things while creating your own model. So there's not much flexibility involved. In, uh, however, for the task that you want to do, a different service will do the job. It's called Azure ML service. Uh, ML Studio, correct. So uh, Saravanas, Saravanas says we can use ML Studio. Uh -huh, yes, you, uh, you can. But integrating that with this uh, vision service won't be a good idea. But huh, do it separately. There also you can create your own model. Fine. It's just that don't come over here and integrate it because that will be a little tedious for you. But huh, you do it over there. And in fact, that's what I do. Whenever I want to create my own custom AI models, I don't come to this uh, uh, Portal called portal.vision.cognitive.azure.com. No, this is not the place where I create my own custom AI models. I'm just showing it to you because it's there in the labs. But for more flexibility, you should always go for Azure ML Studio. Okay, Swamitra says, can you download the model after you trained it? No, unfortunately, Swamitra, with this service, you cannot. If you would have tried Azure ML service, you would have been able to download. So as I mentioned, Swamitra, here there are a lot of restrictions with this vision service, but with Azure ML service, you get a lot of flexibility. There you will be able to do all the things that you want. OK, so I guess there will be some labs for Azure ML Studio. Uh, OK, so what you can do is maybe in AI 900, we can see some labs. So AI 900 is a introductory uh, certification. Above that, we have AI 102, which is a more at uh, you know uh, average level certification but below that you have ai 900 okay which is at a lower level as compared to ai 102 ai 900 as a, is at a lower level as you would, you guys would know so here i guess you have labs related to azure ml yes you can see here you have labs and you can practice those labs if you want here you have a lot of flexibility okay you can practice it if you want to uh, Swamitra says, is AI 900 a prerequisite? Not a prerequisite. However, I would suggest you to complete AI 900 and then only go to AI 102 because you will get some questions uh, that come from AI 900. Okay. So let's say if you have not completed AI 900 directly going for AI 102, it might create issues for you. Okay. Unless and until, let's say, uh, uh, I guess, uh, for example, Swamitra or any other person 
uh, I saw in the chat, they have already worked on uh, machine learning models and deep learning models. So for those guys who have already worked, it won't create an issue if you skip AI 900 and move to AI 102. For those guys, it would not create an issue. But if you are not familiar with machine learning models, deep learning models, if you are just starting right now, okay, you are at a very introductory level, I would recommend you to go for AI 900, then only go for AI 102. Okay, so to answer your question, not a prerequisite. It's not necessary to do AI 900, but if you are at a beginner level in AI, I would still, I would recommend you to do AI 900, then go for AI 102. Okay, but uh, as per rules, not a prerequisite. Okay, so let's see uh, whether our model that we are training is complete or not. Let's see these data. So, okay, I'm still training. Still training. Now, so that's fine. Okay, so let's wait. Okay, so are, are you guys uh, freshers or uh, like are you already working in some company? So, like, what is the uh, level of students? I just wanted to know. So, Saravana, Swamitra, Viji, everybody else. You guys are freshers or already working? I just wanted to understand the uh, profile of these students. Working, okay. Sanmay is working. Anirban is a fresher. Okay. For fresher students, uh, I would strictly recommend, please do not skip the uh you know the roadmap that i gave before the lunch break as i told you first try to learn python fundamentals then machine learning then deep learning after that go for gen ei and then the rest of the stuff right to not keep everything because the job market right now is very very tight just to give you an example i won't name the company but uh, like as i worked with uh, different different companies on a contract basis so uh, just a few months back, I was working with uh, MNC. It's a good MNC, and uh, like I guess next month or so again, I will have to go over there to work with them again uh, on a contract basis. But just to tell you the reality, so they have hired around eight thousand students, and uh, okay, roughly eight thousand students. I don't remember the exact number, but then uh, they realized that they don't have enough projects, uh, and they over hired basically. Okay. So what they did was uh, whenever a fresher induction is done, they go through induction training, right? All the freshers go through induction training of one month, two months, where they are taught different, different technologies. And, and uh, every uh, after every seven days or 15 days, they have to go through a test. Now, they gave us a message. The company itself gave us a message. They do, didn't, want it, uh, didn't want 8,000 students. So they gave us a message to set the question paper in such a way that most of them fail, and that is what we had to do. We set the question paper in such a way that we know students would not be able to pass, and you would not believe out of 8,000, more than 7,050 students, roughly around that number, didn't pass the exam. So almost, you know, out of 8,000, around 7,000 didn't pass. So you're only left with around 950 students or 1,000, so roughly around that number. And this is the reality right now of many companies. So don't skip anything. If you want any help, I'll be there link on LinkedIn. You can contact me. Uh, if at all I have any free materials available with me, I will be giving it to you. But yeah, I just wanted to share the reality. So in case if you are taking it lightly, lightly you won't do that. Okay. And uh, the main thing about those students was, so they came to the, they joined the company in December 2023, but they were hired in around uh, March 2022. So almost for one and a half years, they had to sit at their home. Okay, they were given a letter that, okay, uh, LTA my entry has, uh, uh, you yeah, know, they have given an offer letter. Sorry, not that company. Let's say different company has given an offer letter. Okay. But they had to wait for around one and a half years 
okay and uh, after that they joined the company but they had to leave unfortunately obviously because they could not clear the exam but we deliberately designed the exam in that but fine uh, let's see if our model training has been done or not still training that's unusual uh, how many minutes have passed 15 minutes right it does not take more than 15 minutes uh, vijay says he is working as a freelancer okay so freelancer uh, in which domain vijay in uh, data science domain only or in any other domain web development mobile development Venkata says working. Okay, Venkata is working in a company done with AI and Android about to appear AI one zero two this month. Okay, perfect. Fine. So for experienced people, anyways, that's not an issue. But if you're a fresher, you're just coming in. Job market is a little tight. Okay. Let's see whether our training is complete. No, still not complete. Unusual. Okay, taking some time. So what we'll do is uh, let's do one thing. Okay, uh, so guys, just a note. Uh, around four thirty or so, uh, you know, I will hand over the session to uh, Archie, who will give you a link so that you can attempt a mock test. Okay, it will have questions covering the overall curriculum of AI one zero two. It's just a mock test, nothing else. It will help you to know where you stand correct. Okay. So at 4:30, around 4:30 or so, I'll hand over the session to Archie. So I'm just uh, letting you know the schedule. Let me refresh it once again. Okay, it's taking time. So what we can do is, anyways, we have to take a tea break, right, in the middle. So let's take a tea break now only, instead of just waiting. Okay, it won't be beneficial to any one of us. So let's take a tea break now. Uh, meanwhile, I hope within the T break the training will complete. Okay, and we'll see what to do next. Sir, on us is your LinkedIn profile. Okay, my LinkedIn profile. Okay, let me share my LinkedIn profile. I'll share the link later with you guys. However, on uh, LinkedIn you can just search Smith Shaw's Energetics. Okay, so this is my uh, LinkedIn ID. Smith Shaw Synergetics. Okay, so you can connect with me over here. I'll share the link uh, at the end later on. But for now, you can just search Smith Shaw Synergetics. I'll just come up in the search results. Okay, fine. So let's take a short uh, and guys, uh, before making the Break announcement. In case in future you have you want any materials or anything, usually I have free materials available with me, so you can reach out to me on LinkedIn. Okay, and uh, let's say any dumps or anything, if I have it with me, I will definitely share it with you guys. But fine. Anyways, let's take a short tea break because training of our model is still going on. Instead of just waiting, you know, and wasting our time, it will be better if we take. Uh, tea break. Okay, it's still training. Fine. So let's take a tea break of around 16 minutes, 15, 16 minutes. After that, we'll be back. Till then, I'll just keep my mic on mute.
welcome back to the session everyone hope all of you are back after the short break so guys just before the break we were into our lab number three where we were trying to create our own custom ai model for image classification and we had made sure to start the training for our custom model let's see if the training is now completed or not why is it still training this strange usually the training does get completed in 15 minutes, but fine. What we'll do is to we'll not waste more time. Uh, we'll move on to lab number four. We'll come back to lab number three later on because only the testing part is left in, in lab number three. Uh, nothing else is left. Okay. Uh, so we'll move on to lab number four now. So let's go ahead. And now we'll stick to vision service only. And within vision service, we'll try to understand how we can read text inside of images. Okay, so let's have some images in which, in which some text is written. How can you detect that particular text? Okay, so again, this comes under vision service only. All right, so let's go ahead and let's see how to do it. So in order to do it, what would you need to do? Uh, let's go ahead and let's understand. So first of all, I will get some images wherein I have some kind of text written in it. Let me get those images. This will be our lab number four. All right, and let me show you those images. So for example, we have this image in which some text is written. Similarly, we have this second image over here in which some text is written. So I'll be showing you that irrespective of whether the text is typed by the computer or whether the text is handwritten, still our AI model will be able to detect the text on that image. Okay, let's see how to do it. So over here, I'll go ahead and uh, open up my uh, Visual Studio code. Let's go ahead and do that. Let's open Visual Studio code over here. Okay, and here we go. So let me create a new Python file. I'll create a new Python file over here. I'll name it test.py. And let's start off. So uh, what are we trying to do in our lab number four? In our lab number four, we are continuing with the vision service. However, there's a slight change over here. So what we are going to do over here is apart from continuing with the vision service, so with the vision service, what we'll do is we'll try to recognize text that are written in images. OK, so let's go ahead and let's see how to do it. So uh, in order to do it, what are the things that I need? Uh, let's go ahead and let us understand that. So first thing that I need is. The endpoint of the vision resource that we created. Right? The endpoint of the vision resource. Let's go ahead. Let's get that endpoint from our Azure portal. So we did create a vision resource. So within our resource group, you can see we have created a vision resource. Let's go ahead and check our vision resource. Here it is. OK, let me go to keys and endpoint section. From there, I will get the endpoint first of all. Copy the endpoint and paste it in my code. The second thing that I'll do is I'll get the key. OK, to that particular resource. There are two keys. You can use any one of them as you guys. So there is the key to my resource. Fine. Now what I'll do is using these two things, I'll gain access to the resource that I created. OK. Uh, so if uh, if you're observing over here, guys, for lab two, lab three, and lab four, we are using the same exact resource. 
resource is not changing. Right? Fine. Let's go ahead. Uh, now what I want to do is I want to gain access to the resource using the endpoint and the key. So in order to do it, I'll need help of a class which I will import. So from Azure folder, there is another subfolder called AI. Inside that subfolder, I have another subfolder called Vision. Inside it, I have a file called image analysis. And from that file, I will try to import this class called image analysis client. Fine. So let me go ahead and let me call that class. Now the first thing that I will do is I'll pass the endpoint of my resource. That is the first thing that I would do. And the second thing that I will do is I'll pass the credential to my resource. That means the key to my resource. All right, fine. Now let's go ahead. With this, what will happen is I will establish a connection to the resource. Okay, once the connection is established to the vision resource, what next to do? That was so. Uh, remember what I want to do is again, uh, I want to go ahead and let my resource go through the images. And if at all there are any text written on the images, detect that particular uh, text. Okay, now how to do it? Let's go ahead and let's see. Uh, so, first of all, I'll just go ahead and uh, take this connection to the resource and ask the resource uh, to analyze the image. And what to analyze? First, I want to analyze the image data. Now, remember that the image data has to be in the form of hexadecimal. Okay, this resource requires that if at all it is trying to analyze an image, that data of the image should be in hexadecimal format. Fine, so we know how to do it. We have done it in lab number two also. Same thing we'll do in lab number four. Right. So first, let me mention the path of the image that I am opening. So inside the images folder, there is another file called Lincoln.jpg. This is the file that I will be opening, and I'll be uh, opening it later. I'll be reading the data in the file that is in such a way that I get the data in hexadecimal form. Fine. Let's get the data in hexadecimal format. Once that is done, let's pass the same to our resource. That okay, resource, take the image data that is in hexadecimal format, and we would want you to read the text in the image. So I will say what visual features we want to analyze. Just one visual feature, which is reading text. OK, just one. Which is. Reading text. OK, that's it. Uh, in order to work with this visual features, I'll have to do a import. So let me go ahead and let me do the same. I'll just go ahead so and do the import over here. So if you are observing same imports we did in lab number two also, same imports we are doing now as well. OK, fine. Now let's go ahead. I hope uh, I'm not doing a mistake as such. I don't think so. Fine, if at all there is a mistake, we'll see how to deal with it later. OK, uh, there's one thing that I missed out, which is that while passing my credential, I cannot pass my key as it is. I have to pass it with the help of a function. So first I'll have to import that function. From Azure folder, there is a folder called uh, core. Inside that folder, I have another file called credentials. And inside that file, from that file, I will import this function called Azure key credential. I call this function and inside it, I'll pass my key. OK, this is much better. All right, fine. So what I have done first, I have established a connection to the vision resource. Then using that connection, I've asked the vision resource that OK, take the image data, which is in hexadecimal format and on that uh, image, try to read the text inside of it. OK, and it will go ahead and it will do that for us. We'll get the results 
let's go ahead and let's print the results and let's see what we get. So we'll go ahead and we'll print the results. OK, uh, let me ask the terminal to run the code inside of this Python file called test.py. OK, I'll have to select an interpreter for the set. Let's do it. After that, this should work. Now the same code. OK, it says Python not found. OK. Mm. OK, fine. Uh, the code ran, but it gave an error. Let's try to uh, solve that error over here. Fine. So it's saying that while doing analysis. Had an issue. OK, sorry. The name of the parameter was not wrong. It was visual underscore features. Fine. I have done that change. Now let's see what happens. OK, and I'm getting the analysis results. So it has detected text inside of the image. OK, so first what it has done is. Uh, it has got the text that is there across every line. So for example, inside the first line, we have this text called in this temple. Now within that line, you have different different words. So within that line, it has obtained information about different different words. So first one is in second. word is this third word is temple, right? Then you had the second line. So second line, the text was as in the hearts of the people. Within this line, the first word was as. So you will have information about it, right? Uh, somewhere below saying as somewhere below, you will have information. It's too cluttered, so I'm not able to see it. Huh, here it is as and then so on for the other words as well. After as you should have this word called in, then you should have the word called the and so on. Fine. So across uh, images, first it will try to read the text, right? So you can see first line was in this temple. That's exactly what our resource found out and so on. OK, fine. So what I will do is uh, I want to get the results. OK, so in my results, I'm getting text related information. I want to get the text related information across every lines. So let me go ahead and let me show that to you. So let me check what uh, text blocks it has read. If I run my code, you can see the result is obtained in the form of a list. Now in this list, I just have one element, which is this entire dictionary. The entire dictionary from here up till here is forming as one element inside that list. In order to go inside that element, how to do it, how to subset the first element of a list using index. Guys, any Python developer would help me. How to subset the first element of a list? Which index we have to use? Anybody who is active in the chat? If I want to subset the first element of a list, I would do it how? Using which index number? Zero, right? As Jadeja points out. Using index zero. That's exactly what I will do. Fine. Let's do it. And then you will see that now you will get the element inside of that list, which was a dictionary. And you can see your result, you get the entire dictionary. Fine. Now you only want, okay. So this dictionary is from your okay. Uh I only want the value of uh, I only want this particular value whose key is equal to lines. Now there are many such values, right? I guess there are many such values who have a key equal to lines, right? So for example, this is one value. Then I guess somewhere below you will see the second value as well. Below if I just scroll, you will see second as well. Somewhere below. You should see it somewhere below. It's too cluttered, so I'm not able to find out it exactly, but there are too many uh, values which have a key of lines. So I'll just go ahead and print it out for you guys. Let's go ahead. Let's print it out. 
Okay, and there are too many values, and you can see you're getting the same. Fine. Uh, now there are many lines that were detected. So what we'll do is for each line, for each line, I will try to do something. What I'll do is I will print the text uh, that was obtained in each line. I'll print the text that was obtained in each line. Let's see. So in the first line, the text was in this temple. In the second line, it was as in the hearts of the people. In the third line, it was for whom he saved the union and so on for the fourth and fifth line. You can see same thing is there over here. Okay, first line is in this temple. Second line as in the hearts of the people and so on. Same thing is being obtained over here. Fine. I'll, I want to do something different. What I want to do is for every word detected in the line, I want to draw this type of a box. Over every word, I want to draw this type of a box. If you remember in lab number two, for every object, we had drawn the box. Here, for every word, I'll draw the box. Let's see how to do it. So there are many words inside the line. So I'll have to run a loop. So I'll say for every word that is detected. Uh, get its coordinates. Get its coordinates. Just like we did in the second lab, if you guys remember. And using those coordinates, I'll have to make my own coordinates over here. Okay, let me print it out exactly what coordinates are we getting for every word. For example, for the first word, the coordinates, okay, what I'm getting, coordinate of first point, second point, third point, fourth point. Okay, fine. That will make it easy to make a rectangle, right? I have the four points ready with me. Perfect. So box coordinates are already there with me. So I'll say box coordinates equal to, there'll be four points. Right. In the first point, it will be what? X value will be 328, Y value will be 171. Right. So I will just say for the first point, you will get value inside the first dictionary. Now, in the list, if you want to get the first value, right? So, for example, this first dictionary is acting as the first value of the list. Second value is this. Third value is this. Fourth value is this. Now, I want to get the first value, this one. Uh, in order to do it, you will have to use index zero, as Jadeja has already pointed out. Now, once you get that first value, within the first value, you want to get the x axis coordinate. In order to get it, you will have to use the key of that uh, uh, value. The key of the value 328 is this string called x. So I'll just go ahead and mention that string called x. Fine. Similarly, I will obtain the y axis coordinate as well. Let's obtain the y axis coordinate as well. And similarly, I'll do it for the second point. Then the third point. And then the fourth point. Yeah, perfect. Box coordinates are drawn. Now what I will do is I want to draw something. If I want to draw something, I should do similar to what I did in lab number two. Okay, if you remember in lab number two, I had drawn over the image. In order to draw over the image, I will have to use a class which I will import. So from PIL file, I will import this class called image. Then I'll try to use this class. And using this class, uh, I'll try to call a method called open. I'll try to open the image that we are focusing on. Fine. Once the image is open, we'll try to make some drawings in it. In order to make drawings, I will have to make a canvas. So let me go ahead and let me make a canvas over here. Uh, here I'm using pyplot files from matplotlib folder.
uh, there is a file called pyplot and I will reference that file as plt. Now inside that file called pyplot, which is referenced as plt, I'll call this function called figure. And I'll say that my canvas size will be the same as the current image width and current image height. Current image width and current image height. Fine. Once the canvas is drawn, I'll be able to draw over the image. So I will say that going down the line, I'll perform some drawing. In order to perform some drawing, I will need the help of the class, which I will import. The name of the class is called image draw. So I'll just put a message in my code that going down the line, I'm going to draw over the image. Let me draw over the image over here. Fine. And it will remember it. All right, now let's go ahead. Later, I will say that for every word, please draw a polygon. Uh, whose coordinates are mentioned over here. Uh, the outline of the polygon will be of color, let's say CR. And the width of the four outlines that you will have for this particular rectangle or for this particular polygon will be equal to three pixels. Fine. At the end, I'll just ask it to show the image. And I will show the image in such a way that I output it to a different file altogether. So I'll say my output file is equal to text.jpg. And at last, I will say that whatever I have drawn on the canvas, save it inside of a figure. Sorry, or save it inside of a file called test.jpg. Fine, let's see what happens. OK, here there is an issue in uh, the input. Let's correct that issue. After that, it should work. Let's see. OK, here again, we are getting the same error that we encountered in lab number two. So the current uh, width of the image was sorry, current actual width was 800. But while saving, it's getting converted. Sorry, uh, actual width was 802. But while saving, it is getting converted to 80,200, right? So it's getting multiplied by 100. So if I wanted to convert back to the original state, then I'll have to divide by 100 again. So I'll do it for the width. Similarly, I'll do it for the height. So same problem that we solved in lab number two, same we are solving over here as well. Same exact thing. Nothing is different. OK, let's see now. Fine. And now hopefully we should have a new image where over every word I have drawn a, a rectangle or I have drawn this polygon. You can see it for every word I have done. I, I'll make this uh, plotting even more perfect. Currently, I can see this vast uh, padding. Let me remove the padding. OK, so I will just say to my code that please remove the padding. And make it a tight layout. I'll say pad equal to zero and have a look previously. It, it all uh, you can see there is a lot of padding. OK, now I will just uh, run the code again and have a look now. What happens? I'll run the code. OK, and let's have a look. You can see the pad padding has almost uh, it's almost vanished. Is just that you can see these thick labels because of these thick labels, some white portion is still visible to you. So fine, let me remove these uh, axis ticks or these axis thick labels as they are called. So over here in my code, I will just say that while making the canvas, after making the canvas, make sure that the axis ticks are set to off. Okay, let me run the code. And let's see. And now you can see the result is even better. 
All right. With this, uh, our uh, fourth lab is completed of AI 102, which was to read text inside images. And this, with this lab, you can test on various images. Let's say you want to read text on this uh, handwritten uh, list, right? Handwritten uh, text. And that handwritten text is shown in the image over here. You want to detect that handwritten text, you can even do that. Just change the image that you want to analyze. I have changed it and that's it. Now you will see that you can even detect uh, text uh, that is handwritten. Okay. So you can test with various, various uh, images. I'll just go ahead and upload the code in the chat. Let me upload the code over here in the chat. Ah, now uh, Venkata has a doubt. Venkata says, why did we divide by 100? Is that what you're asking Venkata? Is that what you're asking or something else? Achha, actually, I reminded. Achha. Achha, so now the doubt is clear. Na? Okay. Fine. If there is any other doubt, you can let me know. Any other doubt for any of these students, you can let me know. So, as we mentioned earlier, today we our goal was to complete four labs. And uh, we have completed our four labs over here. Okay. First was to translate speech. Second was to uh, create, uh, sorry, second was to analyze images. Third was to create our own custom AI model for image classification. And fourth was to read text inside of images. So we have performed these four labs, like that there are many labs inside AI 102 that you can perform. Okay, as I mentioned, it will take you around four to five days to complete all of the labs. Okay. So try to see those. If there are any doubts anywhere later on, you can always ask me on LinkedIn. I'll be able to help you out. OK, and I guess uh, Archie has something for you guys. Archie, are you, uh, are you there? Archie? Okay, I'll try to connect with Archie. Uh, she had a... Uh, um, mock exam that she wanted you guys to give one second let me connect with archie over here but up till now guys any doubt whatsoever please let me know uh, so i hope whatever four labs we completed were useful to you okay any doubts you can ask uh, Saravana says so labs will have images as well. Yes, Saravana. So Saravana, for example, just to show you, uh, let's say I'm into this fourth lab, okay? Now this fourth lab itself, in the instructions, it, it has asked you to clone this uh, GitHub repository. Now, if I go to that GitHub repository, you will see that, for example, for this uh, lab, right, which was uh, reading text, Where did it go? There was this lab called reading text. I don't know what, what, huh? Oh, yes, this one OCR, optical character recognition. It's for reading text. Uh, this, by the way, is known as optical char uh, character recognition, the fourth lab that we did. And have a look over here. You can see all these images are given to you. Okay. So in the instruction itself, it is asking you to first clone the GitHub repo. It is asking you to clone it. And there all the materials are there for your practice. And I and, and I also use those materials only for today's lecture. So to answer your doubt, uh, yes, all of these images are there uh, given by Microsoft for your practice. But if you want to practice on your own images, you can do that as well. But Microsoft also provides you some images that you can work on. Okay, I hope that's all your doubt. If there were anything else, you can ask. Vijay says, can you please share a link for the text speech? 
अच्छा अच्छा हाँ दैट पेज ओके आर यू आस्किंग फॉर दैट वॉइस कोड पेज वेर आई वॉज एबल टू सी दी वॉइस कोड लाइक हेनरी न्यूरल अच्छा हाँ हाँ ओके ओके लेट मी शेयर हेनरी न्यूरल ओके and i'll share the link with you okay here it is so all you have to do buddy is uh, click on this tab called text to speech so i'll give you the link then click on this tab tab called text to speech and then you will see the voice codes for every language for speech in every language let me give it to you in the chat uh i'm vijay has a link of for my youtube page okay uh, so synergetics has its own youtube channel i personally do not but yes synergetics has their own youtube channel rc has mentioned the link of the same uh so yes rc has just pasted the link right now in the chat you can uh, follow that youtube channel so regular uh, almost every week we have webinars and recording of those webinars are posted on our youtube channel so free you can gain knowledge from it as much as you okay so yeah achi uh, i guess you wanted to give uh, some test to the students right some mock test yes sir okay all right so achi will hand you the mock test right now so thank you guys for attending i hope uh, the four labs were interesting enough for you and uh, yeah that's it for today and bye guys thank you bye yeah you can continue thank you uh thank you sir for this session guys i shared the mock test link on chat box uh, you can start the test also i'm sharing a feedback form link before leaving the session make sure you fill this feedback form this is very valuable for our upcoming events guys first you fill the feedback form after that you can start the test Yes, guys. You can. Uh... Yes, guys. You can give test after this session, and first you can fill this feedback form. Still, anyone remaining for the feedback form? Please make sure you will fill this feedback form before leaving the session.
Uh, hope you guys all are done with the feedback form. Uh, let's end this session now. Bye.